welcome back from the break. Uh, by the way, welcome, Sebastian. <laughs> but everyone, welcome back from, from the break. If you're only joining us now, this is our second block of talks for Cassis Factory. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube or on Zoom, but then again, if you're hearing me, I assume you're in one of those. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please ask them in the chat or in Slack. There will be time to, to ask them live at the end, but it does help us if we, if we already have a, a list of uh, questions uh, ready. Keep in mind that if you do ask a question live, you will be in the recording, so just keep that in mind. And if you don't want to do it, just note it in the text and I will ask it for you. Our next speakers today are uh, Arno Bailly and Sebastian Nagel. Uh, and I welcome them to, to our virtual stage now. Uh, Arnaud began developing software professionally in 94. He graduated with a PhD from the University of Lille in 2005. And since then, he has worked as a consultant, a lead developer, a technology chief, an advisor, an architect, and a coach. He's also a Haskell enthusiast since 2001, and he joined HiOHK in 2021. Sebastian is an Austrian software engineer and functional programming enthusiast. He studied CS and graduated from TU Munich with a master's degree in robotics, cognition, and intelligence. Within the robotics industry, he got to know and love Haskell, formal methods, domain-specific languages, and interpreters. After several years creating robot programming languages, development platforms, and IoT projects at Franca Emica, uh, Sebastian joined IOHK in 2021. Their talk today is titled Hydra Next Generation State Channels, and it will focus on the research, development, and productization of an L2 solution to accommodate the growing numbers of participants and transactions on Cardano by means of isomorphic multi-party state channels between subsets of participants. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. It's uh, kind of giving away everything. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I think we don't need to do, do any introductory rounds anymore. Um, so we could probably just start with the presentation. Um, should see my screen. Hopefully with Zoom, uh, it works as well. Um, and I hope the aspect ratio is fine. Uh, we will switch it in a half, so you have a higher chance of a good aspect ratio for a second half of it. Um, this is working, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you so far. Yeah. Good. So yes, it is working. Fine. All right. Good. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Sebastian, and with me is Arno, as we got introduced kindly. Um, we are here from Input Output, and we want to talk about Hydra. Um, and I will be starting uh, with uh, firstly uh, some kind of uh, introduction on on blockchain scalability. On the, on, the, on the problem statement in itself. Uh, I want to give an introduction to the Hydra Hedge protocol, which is the name of this layer two scalability protocol we, we have been working with. And Arno will continue with, uh, uh, on our road basically, and what, what we actually covered uh, on implementing this, this research paper now into the industry. All right, so, Blockchains uh, or many blockchains have to their goal to create a open and a public or sometimes private but open uh, financial operating system or a store of value or a means to transact the value between individuals all over the place, all over the globe uh, without a central actor and uh, in that sense provide an alternative to traditional financial uh, systems. Uh, the goal in that sense uh, always includes to accommodate uh, the system for millions of users and billions of transactions potentially in, uh, in a fashion which is still globally distributed as I just said and uh, in, in a primarily decentralized nature so everyone can be part of it and uh, you could be your own bank or you could be your like uh, your own uh, operator of, uh, of, of lending and, and, and or decentralized exchanges and transaction values. So everything is decentralized, everyone, everything should be empowered to the individual. Um, I hope this uh, speaks also for some projects you know, uh, but it certainly speaks for what uh, project we are in. Uh, so Cardano is goal to decentralize 
uh, finance and make it an open financial operating system to everybody. And the way this, this kind of problem or this kind of task is uh, usually approached is, is by gaining and um, by creating the system in a way that, that everybody can use it without trusting a central actor. It, the goal is to actually gain consensus uh, uh, along this very decentralized and globally distributed uh, nature uh, of, of a system of a network. And this is usually done through uh, massive global replication. Um, for example, by submitting transactions, broadcasting it through this whole network, uh, capturing these transactions by, by some, some of the currently active block producers, for example, they would basically get these transactions, create blocks uh, according to some consensus algorithm, uh, and, and then write that down so the, the, the progress can be made on, on the whole global network. And this goes all, goes all around, uh, depending on the consensus algorithm. Um, in proof of work, it's basically the, the people who would be operating these mining uh, machines. And, and, and uh, in proof of stake, this would be like stake pool operators. In other consensus algorithms, this is another select group, uh, which is sometimes randomly changing. So we have a, we have a need to actually distribute transactions all, all over the place, but also uh, uh, these transactions should be like replicated massively between the whole network. So it really is uh, clear that there was no, no uh, censorship or anything. This naturally uh, results in uh, comparably low throughput and high latency. Um, it's quite natural because transactions need to be sent through one point, uh, maybe across the whole globe, uh, such that they can reach uh, all network participants. And also the whole the whole means to actually make sure it's secure and not even you don't need to trust anybody on the network um, to be able to process transactions in that way um, requires uh, more work to be done and literally in proof of work for example and this results in uh, limited uh, resources and a low throughput in general and it's not so easy to to tackle like this this limitations on scalability because. Uh, known to this, uh, there, there's this concept of a blockchain trilemma, and you see it on the right hand side, that uh, in, a, in order to reach scalability, uh, you would necessarily uh, need to compromise security or decentralization. Why is the traditional financial uh, systems uh, very scalable? For example, uh, like the Visa payment system it can process many, many transactions per second. Uh, it's, it's only because uh, these transactions are processed in a data center or in a, in a couple of data centers uh, with close location, uh, or basically they, it, it's not so much replicated through like thousands and thousands of uh, operators across the network. And you could reach the same thing with, with a blockchain system by just uh, having a small number of people who operate it. Um, so the more, the smaller the numbers are on, 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 a, on a blockchain project, uh, the faster it can go usually. Uh, it also depends on the, consensus mechanism, how much uh, communication is necessary between the participants um, and, and how much uh, overhead we have uh, on the communication because of security. So um, we can get scalability by either compromising decentralization or security, but we wouldn't want to do that. And so many, many uh, projects, uh, multiple approaches in the ecosystem have been like aiming to solve this uh, trilemma or to, to maybe cut the balance, uh, strike the balance slightly different. And uh, we want to talk today a bit about state channels, uh, but there's other approaches like side chains, uh, where you would uh, have uh, additional functionality or a different uh, kind of level decentralization on purpose, uh, mirror smaller replicas of the same blockchain, but uh, more attached to the main blockchain and, and inheriting security guarantees that way. Um, Rollups, which uh, work very similarly, but just slightly different, uh, where you would tra process transaction also in a, in a smaller group of people. Um, uh, sharding as uh, like an idea of uh, partitionizing or uh, partitioning the, the workload of the, the blockchains but differently. Uh, Lightning Network is maybe a good example uh, as, a, as a way to actually scale a very slow blockchain, for example, Bitcoin in this case, 
uh, which is uh, using lots of energy and lots of hashing power to actually secure the network. Uh, it's widely adopted, it's very secure, but it has quite limited resources. And the notion of uh, payment channels, the concept of payment channels as they're used on Lightning Network, really make the, the whole system still usable or usable again for very small transactions. So Lightning is a good example, and it's actually very similar to what we do. Uh, but let's me, uh, quickly summarize uh, uh, why, why state channels can work, right? So what is the basic um, idea, uh, what, what this is based on? And it goes by the principles of not every transaction requires necessarily global consensus. So if you want to like settle a, a bet with your friends or like pay for the dinner, you don't need everybody on, on the globe on the other side of the planet agree on that this actually happened, right? This is enough if, if you actually settle it with, with, the, with your business partners. And uh, usually um, you, would, you would actually um, ideally want to use a system which, uh, which, which can actually work only between you and your business partners. Um, by not needing to actually submit that something happened uh, to everybody on the network, we could go faster naturally, right? So as we had before in, in a more centralized fashion, processing transactions, we could, if we only need to uh, communicate the transaction between uh, the actual people involved in, 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 in a process, in a business process, uh, we could go faster, like you can actually not have a lower latency. And um, another premise, another idea which we could leverage is if everything's fine, so if, if everybody agrees, um, yeah, okay, that deal happened, or that that's kind of uh, that was the the game round, and uh, that person win 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 the pot. Uh, if everybody agrees, then there is no need for like a global permissionless ledger, decentralized ledger technology to to be the judge. Um, but that's that's also quite uh, intuitive. Um, but still, right? Uh, if somebody is not playing ball, right? If something goes wrong in Ori, we would want to maybe want to have that global system as a fallback, right? Go, going to the next instance, if you lose a, a, a court case uh, on a local court, you could go to the national court and so on. So and these, these basic ideas are, are used uh, in many of the scalability uh, uh, projects, ideas, solution ideas. And they're also used in state channels. And this is what we want to talk about, a state channel as a layer two on top of a blockchain. Um, so. Uh, before I explain this quickly, right, within this whole setup, uh, we at IHK and especially the Hydra team is, is like aiming to solve the, the scalability problem in that sense. Uh, in, in general, uh, furthering growth and adoption of one of this blockchain project, which is Cardano. And yeah, the, the benefits, what we're aiming for is naturally faster transactions, cheaper transactions. Um, and of course, uh, some enabling some use cases which wouldn't be possible otherwise. Um, and so uh, the research team at IHG has been set off, like looking at the previous research, previous uh, uh, other solutions out there, and has been like coming up with a, with a protocol I would like to explain now. And uh, we've been implementing that over the last year or so. So Hydra had, um, so Hydra in general as a concept, but the Hydra head uh, is, is one specific protocol, which is uh, also called uh, isomorphic multi-party state channels. And I would like to explain in the next couple of slides what this means um, before we uh, see maybe it uh, working and how we approached it. I uh, forgot to fix the animation here, but anyhow, um, let me start by giving a quick introductory or motivating use case here and what a multi-party state channel could work like. So you see a global ledger, like a globe on the left-hand side, the general ledger, uh, which represents the blockchain, uh, a massively replicated uh, distributed ledger, uh, which uh, you can see like a big table on who owns what. On the right-hand side, we, uh, we have a group of people, like four people wanting to play poker. And they could play poker on the, on the, on the base, on the world's account ledger, Right, they could just play their game and decide who won and distribute the wealth uh, as uh, uh, by winning the pot as they as they want. Uh, you could do it on the on the layer one on the on the blockchain on the left hand side, but uh, you would want to do it uh, maybe not as slow. For example, in Bitcoin, you would need to like wait 
10 to 20 minutes for a block uh, to your transaction be included, and it's very expensive. So our goal is to take, uh, this is a bit like broken, but I guess the animation makes it clear. So this small mini ledger was part of the general ledger before. So we were extracting the mini ledger, like a small part of the, of the general state, extract it and make it available to be processed off chain, as it's called, or in the state channel. We would take the, the, small, the small notion of who owns what uh, and want to process this now separately from the general ledger. And we, we can process this now faster and cheaper. Uh, faster because we need to communicate only between us four and cheaper because we only need to pay uh, whatever is to be operated to do that uh, and not pay the whole network to actually uh, acknowledge all our transactions. Um, so we could play the, uh, the round of poker very interactively and as it's uh, more snappy as on the, the world's ledger. Um, at, at some point, we actually, we want to, uh, at, at certain points in time, um, these people agree on, okay, yeah, now Alice won this round, now Bob did won the next round, and so the, pro the, the game progresses. And we have these uh, acknowledged or uh, agreed states. Uh, these uh, is indicated here, like some small signatures, I'm not sure if it's clear. Uh, and we have a, a common understanding that this is uh, the now new truth. Um, and finally, we want to be able to bring it back into the general uh, ledger again, right? So, and this, uh, this reintegration of the, of the, of the more, smaller ledger state from the state channel back into the global ledger is, is the, the end of the life cycle of a, of a state channel, basically. Um, I said payment channels before, for example, uh, because we could simply do tr payment transactions between these four people, but it could also be any kind of like state uh, evolution, right? So um, where, where Bitcoin is for transacting and storing value, some other blockchains like uh, Ethereum is more like for general execution, general uh, uh, smart contract execution. So any kind of state modification is what typically sets a state channel apart from a payment channel as being more generic. And this is now more, uh, uh, more generalized here by having a multi-party, not like between two, but between multiple parties. Um, this is the, basically the same kind of sequence, but uh, uh, drawn up on a, on, on a time axis here. Uh, so we see the blockchain on the, on the bottom here. Uh, we lock up funds on the blockchain. We bring them, uh, make them available to a state channel can be done once or multiple times. Uh, they are processed somehow in the state channel in step two. And eventually I uh, wanna bring that back to the blockchain. It can also be done uh, at the end of a life cycle, but also like uh, ideally multiple times reintegrating it. And here it becomes quite obvious that this is a layer two. Uh, and layer two system, meaning um, if whatever happens in the state channel should be enforceable should be able to be fall back on the layer one, right? As in step three, we can fall back on the security of the layer one. And the layer one here, the blockchain, we see a dashed line here. Um, make sure that this change of light green to dark green, that the new state is, is actually honored to the same kind of rules of uh, what we would expect from the the general ledger, that is a preservation of value. Nobody got richer. It was just a redistribution of value intuitively. Okay, a uh, quick detour on, on ledger models, just to point out one or two things why our work here is a bit different to what you might be hear hearing from the, uh, uh, as state channels have been around for a while. Um, there is basically two distinct ledger models uh, or at least these two major ones. Uh, one is uh, an account-based ledger model where you have uh, very much this, this table we saw before, this general ledger being a, a big table of many entries. Uh, each individual or even like uh, systems or contracts would have an, a row on this table, would have a state uh, in, in, in this big uh, global state and transactions attached to it by, by processing uh, this state into a new state. So sigma turns into sigma prime and the transaction basically changes this state in one way or the other. Uh, it can change all the values, cannot change only a single one. Um, the other model is the UTXO or EUTXO, it has been extended here, um, 
uh, model. In the UTXO model, we would have uh, the ledger state is uh, a set of smallish uh, nodes, uh, which contain some kind of value. So instead of rows, we have like these nodes and transactions do attach on some of these nodes. They consume some of these nodes and produce new ones. So a transaction needing to be in balance can spend this value and produce new value or a new distribution of value, uh, maybe addressed to different uh, individuals. Um, and these nodes here are, as the red ones are spent and the black ones are unspent, these are the unspent transaction outputs. Um, the actual state of the whole distributed ledger then is basically comprised by all the unspent transaction outputs um, or subsets thereof, right? So we can see here in the, in the bottom um, gray thing that uh, this, is, this is the state of the ledger. And this is important now if you think about uh, how do we do this uh, layer one to layer two transfer and how does the state channel work? In an account-based model, we have this global state. And if you want to like take part of this global state into one state channel, we need to take very special care. Um, each system currently interacting with this global state need to be aware that something is now not available anymore uh, to be like modified. It needs to be locked. Uh, so anything which needs to be put off chain, what, as we would call it, uh, needs to have like special preparation beforehand. And especially the transaction processing in general of, a, of an account-based ledger is very sequential. So we would need to uh, be processing uh, whatever we put off chain needs also be treated in a very sequential manner, like the overall, it's, it's just natural in an account-based ledger. Um, in a UTXO-based ledger, however, we, our state is just a set of substates. It's really the, like a small collection of dots uh, intuitively, right? And we can take these uh, as these are like a, a sub part of the graph. They are partly independent of, the, uh, they are really independent of the rest uh, and they can be moved or uh, can be locked up, uh, but only that part is locked up. And this is very, can be done in a very natural way to the, to the underlying natural ledger model. So there is no preparation required and, and uh, UTXOs cannot just be locked up on the layer one. Um, in our case, they are then represented just the same on the, on the, on the layer two. So if we, if we just use the same identical ledger model on the layer two, uh, we gain the same properties of transaction processing of a UTXO-based ledger, which is highly concurrent uh, as this, uh, some of these outputs. Uh, if you have a transaction spending one output and we have multiple other transactions to be uh, processed, but they are not touching the same outputs or as inputs in that sense, uh, they are completely uh, independent and can be processed concurrently and in uh, a more uh, uh, in a higher if higher parallelism even. And this is uh, interesting because, uh, to our knowledge, uh, there hasn't been much work before on UTXO or UTXO-based state channels, and this is what we exactly what we're doing. Uh, we will hear in a bit from from Arno uh, the the some kind of. Uh, specialties still, but uh, this, this ledger model uh, is really the, one of the, the unique things, uh, which makes the construction quite elegant, in my opinion. Uh, now quickly to the life cycle of a Hydra head, um, you can see the, it's, it's basically the same picture again, you see the layer one on the bottom and the layer two on the top, whereas the layer one here has some kind of like initialization stage where we, uh, these blocks are transactions on the blockchain. Um, some actors, yeah, it's three actors, uh, would put down transactions to say what they want to get into a, a Hydra head, into the state channel. Uh, this is then collected and whatever was actually collected, so the, all the, all the substates of the UTXO uh, ledger state, the, 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 the mini ledger, what we want to bring into the state channel, is getting collected, it's getting locked up in this collects transaction. And at this very moment, in, from then onwards, we have this as an initial state available to us on the layer two. Um, that means uh, we can then start spending these things on the layer two. Uh, these are kind of mirrored over there. And we spend these, uh, these, these outputs or this ledger, uh, this value, uh, what, we put, what we brought with us, we can spend it on the layer two with uh, 
also with the same kind of transactions. In our case, we can just use the same kind of transaction formats. Uh, so this is what we would call isomorphic um, as it's using the same ledger model and it's using the same transaction format. An application working on, on a Hydra head uh, can just use the same ways of posting transactions to the blockchain. It can just do the same in posting transactions to a Hydra head. So we, uh, it indicates here a bit that we have like many, many transactions here. We can go quicker uh, as uh, the transaction confirmation time here is a bit disconnected from blocks production on the network. It's really only a transaction uh, gets processed uh, into these intermediary states. And we have this U1 here as, uh, as a first snapshot, as we would call it. Um, it basically is a snapshot of the new ledger state um, and it is an enforceable state. It's something where all the people are running the state channel, the operators, and need to agree on. And if they agree on, uh, everyone involved knows from that point onwards that whatever was signed off here will be a thing eventually on the layer one. So uh, the transactions are already final when we see the signatures here. And we can go on and can uh, do it in, even maybe in concurrency and go, can go faster. We can maybe do it with some kind of different, uh, um, what's it called, parameters. So, uh, well, maybe you need to pay some fee on the layer one. Maybe you don't need to pay a fee for each individual transaction layer two, because you don't need to pay the whole network. You need to pay the, the people operating the Hydra head to actually process your transaction. Um, at any point in time, um, each of the operators can close the ch channel. So it's really, non, uh, no, you're not taking hostage uh, in, in this. So if you're a part of the Hydra head, you can decide when it's over, or you can decide when you want to stop processing. So it's really non-custodial in that sense. And um, we can take in this example, for example, any of these enforceable states to close off and enforce one particular state on the layer one. Um, as this is more like a, a forced closure, it's not really cooperative. It can be done co cooperative, but in this basic scenario, um, just Alice closes the head directly with uh, her. She thinks uh, U1 is the latest state. Uh, but if there is a later, even more recent state uh, where Alice uh, did, lo did lose the last round of poker, I'm not sure, right? So it's an unfavorable state maybe for Alice. Uh, so Bob says, no, 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 I, I did win the poker round, the last one, so I have a bit more uh, money now, right? And this last round of poker is represented by the latest snapshot, which can be contested here. And so there is no slashing, no punishing involved, but rather uh, simple, yeah, we agreed that this was the latest state, so we can enforce it on the layer one um, using uh, layer one security mechanisms like smart contracts down here. Uh, fan out is basically just redistributing the funds as it was agreed in the layer two in the state channel and uh, this closes off basically the life cycle of a hydra head and this was created by a group of researchers at ihk uh, in 2020 was published and uh, peer-reviewed uh, the whole concept um, what i just showed was a very basic construction there is some extensions and it's a very nice paper uh, 60 pages deep, so might want to check it out, might not. Um, and uh, we have been setting off uh, and implementing this. So this was basically our starting point. And uh, yeah, that's that's where we started to make it a reality a year ago. Uh, with this, I hand over to you, Arno. And you want to switch maybe screens? Yep. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, okay. So, um, you're uh, we're seeing, seeing your second screen, I guess. Oh, sorry. The timer. Oh, my bad. Uh, yes. Is better now? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I will, I will close this uh, presentation by uh, giving you some uh, of the gory details about uh, going from a research paper uh, to uh, a usable product. Or yeah, we are not there yet totally, but we are getting closer every day. Um, so the first, um, yeah, the um, uh, so here is what's the what what the. Um, the architecture of the uh, Hydra system looks like from uh, from a high level. 
Um, so once again, you can see here, we, we, we have this layer two on the top and the layer one. So the, the core of the system we are building is what we call the Hiver node. So the Hiver node is the, um, the, the, the process, the, um, the, the server that will host the Hydra head. Hydra head is the logical concept, the thing that, uh, that uh, participants work with. Um, and the higher node is, is the, 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 uh, the physical or the, the actual uh, process that will run and that connects to other higher nodes. So there is, uh, that's, that's where the notion of layer is, is also obvious. Uh, there is a distinct network which interconnects the higher node. Um, and um, the, each higher node is also connected to the layer one uh, here, uh, Cardano node. Cardano node is the, the basic component of the Cardano network uh, in order to ensure that um, the, 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 the Hydro node has a direct access to the chain. And this is a very important property of the um, Hydra state channels. Uh, <clears throat> the fact that a Hydra node, uh, a participant in, in the Hydra heads um, is safe and secure as long as it is online and it can observe and react to events coming from the, from the chain. Um, so in this case, <clears throat> yeah, observing what transactions get posted and posting information. Um, um, yeah, and on the right hand side, we 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 we, hide, we, we try to align the fact that now you you can have a client application. This client application can work and talk to um, both uh, the, um, the, uh, the 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 hydro node and the Cardano node, and <clears throat> We also note that um, thanks to the isomorphism, uh, isomorphism property that uh, Sebastian mentioned, and the fact that the, the transactions that goes into the hydro node are exactly the same that goes into the color node. I mean, exactly the same down to the bytes uh, because the interface, the hydro node accepts uh, what a, a CBOR or a serialized transaction in the exactly the same format that the color node does. And <clears throat> that would allow any, any, any kind of DAP which is built for uh, working with transactions on the Cardano kind of node to work also with the header node. And this is also true for a wallet. So if, if a wallet wants to uh, do transactions with the header node, then the formats of transactions and the UTXO system and, uh, would be different. Of course, the API is different. A uh, hybrid node expose a, a specific API to interact with, but the, the, the data which is transported uh, doesn't need to be reinterpreted in, a, in, another, uh, in another model. Um, so yeah, this is the high level uh, picture. Um, to give you, I will give you a quick flavor. So this is the, uh, the demo moment uh, where um, yeah, usually things go awry, but luckily this time it will, it will work. Um, um, so here you can see, we, we build a small terminal, um, uh, terminal based user interface to represent what it would look like to interact with, uh, with a hybrid node from an external client. Clients. So here you can see I have split my screen in two in three parts. We have three clients. Uh, this is a version 0 0.60 of uh, Hydra, which is which has been cut out just today, just a couple hours ago. And yeah, it, we can see that here the clients here is connected to a different Hydra node. So you have the clients, uh, and each client is connected to its own node. Um, and each client is also uh, identified by a party and an address and we can see that the clients are interconnected to its peers, so it gets some, some messages. Uh, the first stage, uh, as uh, Sebastian mentioned, was is to, to init a head. So if I press init, normally I should see the head is in initialized. So this starts the, uh, the, the Hydra state machine. So now every party can commit. So I will make sure that the different parties can, can commit uh, as as the commit uh, sequence proceed, of course, here I'm doing sequentially because I only have two ends and one head, but normally the, the, the various, uh, in, in, uh, the, if you have more parties, they are distributed, then they would just uh, commit uh, in, in parallel as soon as they observe the chain. You can see also some messages some message appearing in the, in, the, in, the, in the status line, but uh, usually they disappear too fast. And the last uh, node, so would, Okay, so now the head is open. This is uh, shown as the head status. So that's the that's the um, the second state of the uh, of the the state machine. And now you can make transactions. So I can uh, make a transaction with node three. I will select this UTXO and uh, I will send it to whatever recipient 
is available and I will send not all the money, but some amount. And you can see here, so that's where the transaction is happening on layer two. Um, and uh, the UTXOs are, are, are changed um, as, uh, as we go. So if I try to create a new transaction from the two, for example, um, and say sending maybe to this node, I could just say, okay, here it is. I create a new UTXO and here we go. We can make more transactions. Once we're happy with the, we, we, once the, the, the head needs to be closed, this is um, a user action. A user decides to close the head. Um, and there is, uh, this is where we enter the contestation period. Um, in this, our current implementation, the contestation, the contestation process is fully automatic. Um, this is the node that takes care of, okay, seeing that a close transaction has been uh, posted on chain and, um, and, and proving that, oh yeah, this is not the latest snapshot, so I can post a contest transaction. Uh, obviously, this is not happening here because the, the timeline uh, is, is way too short. And once the consistency period has passed, then we can simply fan out the head. And this is where we, we get the, 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 the UTXOs uh, being distributed on chain. Um, for the sake of the demo, this is not working on the, on the main net, of course. Uh, this is working on the local development net uh, for, for, of Cardano, but this is just exactly the same. This is the same Cardano that, 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 uh, that, that runs uh, the, the code. Okay, um, I hope to, you get a, a, a rough idea of how the dynamics of it. Um, a little bit more details, um, a, a few interesting things about the implementation that we, we, we worked on. So th this is the zoom, this zooms in into the, the other, uh, the same representation that we had before, but uh, with, with a focus on the central, uh, on the structure of the higher node. Um, a couple of interesting things that we, we can say about uh, this implementation. So, uh, um, the, the central piece of the header node is the, what we call the head logic. And this, uh, the, the interesting thing about this head logic is it's a, it's a pure thing, it's a pure function. So you can think in terms of uh, even, sourced, uh, even sourcing or uh, reducer, redux, react kind of uh, system where you have a pure function that takes some events. Those events can come from the various uh, connectors or the various uh, systems that we are connected with. So we have the client on the right hand side, the clients uh, expose, uh, uh, for the clients we expose an API. This API is currently exposed as a web socket. So um, uh, a fully asynchronous duplex API. Um, the ad logic is also connected to the chain. So events can come from the chain, like observing transactions and from network and network are, uh, Incoming messages are uh, are events representing communications from the other hidden nodes in the network, um, and of course these this this uh, the when the end logic reacts to, reacts to to events and can produce change its state. Uh, the state being uh, represented above um, in the, in the, the upper part of the system, um, it can change its state and produce new, new uh, effects. And these effects will represent interaction that will be sent to other parties. So for example, if we follow the, the path of, a, of a start, the, the starting of a node, of a, of a head, you can see that the Hydra client will, in its, the, uh, will, will ask for initializing the head. This is gets into the event as the head logic. The head logic posts a transaction, uh, posts a tra transaction to the chain. This transaction gets submitted to Carlo node. And at some point, this transaction gets finalized or, or, or confirmed from the kernel network, which is observed by the chain command. And chain command uh, push uh, back an event to the head logic. And this changes the state of the head logic to uh, initialize. And now the commit can happen and the head logic will, would, send, um, would, uh, would send a notification to its client saying, hey, uh, the, the, the head has been initialized and here is, here is the state of the, here are, here are the parties and, here is, and please, please do your commit. And now the same dance goes on for the commit. Um, a few uh, other things to note in, in the various, in this implementation and what, what um, the main thing, the, an, important, uh, an interesting point is this uh, black, uh, white and black box about the kernel ledger. This is really the exact same code that the kernel node is using. 
really the, it's a library. So we are using the same library. So we, we are using the same ledger rules. And this is very important. And this is also a pure function, by the way. So we, we put transactions, we put a UTXO set, we put a transaction, and this tells us whether or not the transaction is valid and what's the outcome, what's a new UTXO set. And this is very convenient because now we can we, we can leverage the same logic, and this is really where the isomorphism kicks in. Um, and of course, we um, the, uh, the the security of the on-chain is implemented using the uh, what we call the the Plutus scripts. So Plutus is the Cardano uh, smart contracts language, um, which um, is uh, as a Haskellish flavor, I would say. So it's it's uh, it's a it's a, it's a region in something that looks like Haskell, but gets compiled to be executed and run on chain uh, use, uh, as, a, as, a, as a pure lambda calculus function uh, uh, expression uh, that tells whether or not a transaction is valid. And that's only what the script has. Um, this, this has been uh, developing this Plutus script because this is an important part of the, uh, of the security of the system has been a significant effort, especially as it's a, it's a bit of a moving target. This is pretty new and, and pretty challenging. But um, um, this is also very pow powerful. And that's where really, uh, that's what provides the core security of, uh, for, for the Hydra blockchain. And, and we better be right in implementing that. Um, so yeah. Uh, just, sorry to interrupt, just one second. We're, we're at time now. So if you could uh, wrap up yeah. in the next couple of minutes, that would be Yeah, great. okay. So I will just, I will just go fast into the, 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 the rest of the slides. So you, you will get the summary. I guess you will get the slides uh, available anyway. Um, um, just, uh, yeah, a small focus on what's, what's the, what, what we are targeting. This is the basic hardware head, like what we call topologies. Those topologies represent for the basic hardware head, uh, the, the, the thing we are implementing is a building block. This is, it's a, it has a limited set of features. It can allow, it allows one, uh, people to run hydro nodes and in a very, with a fixed set or known set of participants in a closed world way. And um, it's really a building block. And the, the, the goal is to use that once we get that version 1.0 out, to use that as a building, building block to build more powerful abstractions, like for example, interconnected heads using some, some research that's been uh, implemented uh, at the, that's also been, been implemented at IOG, um, or, or various other topologies that, that would be made, made, that would be made possible by uh, uh, this, uh, the, this building block. Um, I would quickly go, so well, we, we take great care at IOG to, um, to um, we, we, we take pride into um, implementing things using a, a more formal approach and a, a very structured and formal approach. So this is something that we, are also implementing for Hydra and, and uh, currently working on a quick check based uh, test uh, test generation system that will allow us to verify that the properties that are stated in the paper uh, are actually implemented in the uh, reflected in the implementation. And we, we check that the properties are old for the implementation, potentially using some assumptions around the adversarial behavior of the network. Um, if you want to know more, there is a website. Uh, everything happens in open source, of course. Uh, there is a website that you can join, so you can join the Hydra family. Uh, this is a really good entry point to the ecosystem and to what we are doing. Uh, everything that most everything that we talk about is is there in a form or, or another. Um, and yeah, there is a repository which is public. Uh, contributions, of course, are, are welcomed uh, in any form, including uh, yeah, stars, feedbacks, uh, whatever. Um, and I guess that's it. <laughs> so if I don't know if we have time for questions or if you just to uh, move on to something else, but here is uh, basically a current state of uh, state of the union for for the Hydra, um, yeah, uh, layer two solution for Canada. Right, fantastic. Thank you for your talk. If someone has a really urgent question that they want to ask, we can take one. Other than that, I see that Sebastian is already answering questions in Slack. So obviously you can always ask your questions in, in Slack as well. And we'll keep the discussion going even after this is over.